Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online every Saturday at 1215 Pacific. Now, I want you to go with me to Isaiah chapter 2. There's a lot of things going on in our world. But one thing that I want to say about our society is we are, so many of us are being led around by the nose. And we have got to get into God's word Read what God says, stay in God's face, seek God for every answer, for every clue, for every sign. Because if we don't, we will be chasing every little thing that's going on over here and over there and over there. I remember years ago, there were a lot of things going on. And one minute, you hear somebody ran over here to check this out, and then somebody heard something happening over there. And and it was, it was like people were darting all over the place, running from one big uh, event to another big event. And, and it was exciting, but it was also confusing. And sometimes we have to remember, who is the author of confusion? Satan. And if we're not careful, we will get caught up in the whirlwind thinking it's a summer breeze, not recognizing that we have just been overtaken by a tornado that is developing right over our heads. And before we know it, what was sucked up all in it and have no idea where we will end up because we weren't watching and praying. And next thing you know, we could get hurt. So be careful about that. That just came to my mind at that moment. Uh, be careful not to mistake a summer breeze or not to get a summer breeze and a tornado confused. You hear me? Keep your eyes open. That means watch and pray. No matter what's going on, no matter what's being said, no matter what the source is of the news, watch and pray. Okay? Because God will give you discernment of spirits. And you will know. Okay, let me go on to uh, Isaiah chapter 2. Let's go on with the word. <clears throat> All right. Now, I'm basically going to read the whole thing. So, for y'all who don't like the word, you can skip over this and get to the message once I'm done. But the word is more important than the message. Trust me. And it behooves you. The reason I always like reading the word, a lot of us don't get into the word as often as we should. And what you end up being is malnourished spiritually. You can hear 10,000 sermons, but if you are never reading the word for yourself, you are spiritually malnourished. You hear me? It's very important. The reason I say that is because the word is alive. Whatever comes out of God's mouth is alive, y'all. It may have applied back in, in 200 AD, but it also applies here in 2024. God's word is very much alive. And we desperately need to read his word to get a feel of his heart, his spirit for the times we live in now. All right. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. This is Isaiah chapter two, in case you forgot. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Now we're talking about the, the end times. All right. <clears throat> Verse three. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. And he shall teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears 
into pruning hooks. Let me stop right there. For those of you who like the idea of having all kind of weapons all over the place, God says, if you live by the sword, you shall die by the sword. So if you want to live in this day and age and you want supernatural divine protection, a bullet will not get it done as well as your faith in God and in the name of Jesus. You wield that name and you got more protection than you do wielding a literal sword. You wield the name of Jesus. You have more protection than you do pulling the trigger. I'm telling you, God's name is more powerful than any weapon. One day, one of these days, God's going to demonstrate that. But for now, I just ask you to believe it. Hmm. God does not want the weapons in our hands being what we believe in. That's why he says, he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Do you realize what that's saying? What he's saying is the things you use for a weapon of destruction is going to be used as a tool for building and rendering life, healing, power. Mm. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Now that tells you right there what God's opinion is on human beings and their weapon, their weaponry. Five, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Wow. This right here is another loaded statement. Mm, mm, mm. So what they're saying is, the world is depending on the world systems to get things done for them. They are trusting in soothsayers. They are like the Philistines. They please themselves in children of strangers. Seven, their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. So they are, if you look at them in the, in the human form, wherever people are putting their trust, they're looking at something that looks self-sustainable, self-contained. But nothing that is of this world is self-contained. The source is God. That is where your protection comes. That is where the power comes. That is where your sustenance comes. Do you hear me? But this world has been trained to lean on man rather than God. To lean to our own understanding rather than leaning on the word of God. Eight. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. Just like the monkey God Pat mentioned earlier. And check this out. The mean man boweth down and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. What are they bowing down and humbling themselves to? They're idols. You find these CEOs and these corporate heads and these leaders out here that depend on their clout. They depend on their connections. They depend on how much money they have. They depend on all the networks and all of their, all the, the, their comrades to keep everything alive and well the way they want things to be. But they don't realize all God has to do, y'all, is inhale. And everything and everybody will drop like little dead flies. With all the power, with all the money, with all the clout, with all the whatever you want to call it. We forget who really is in control. Because we're still focusing on man to save the day. 
Mm, think about that. The Bible says, let God be your trust. Mm. Let God be true and every man alive. All right, let's move on here. Verse 9. I read that. The mean man boweth. Now they're bowing to their idols. 10. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of men shall be humbled. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So if you're looking for King Tut, or you're looking for uh, Pharaoh, or you're looking for the, the, the little kid down the street that, that just won $10 million or $10 billion in the lotto, and he's a genius, and he's a child prodigy, and he can do math, like like no other. He knows science like no other. He's a musician like no other. He can do all of this and then he's rising up to rule the world. No matter who the person is, stop putting your trust in man. Here's a way to look at it, y'all. When you, it's going to be funny. I know I have my little crass Example, so forgive me for that. That's my crazy personality. I don't mean to be uh, tacky, but I, I try to bring things down to human form so we can see it in the, in the natural, the way it really should be seen in the right perspective. When you look at all of these symbols, all of these icons, all of these, these name brand people that are supposed to save the day, Think of this, the next time you have to go to the restroom and you have to take care of your business and it's what we call number one or number two and you have to do both at the same time, think of the people you're looking up to. Think of the people you're waiting for to save the day. They have to do the same thing you're doing and their stuff stinks just as bad as yours. Keep people in the right perspective, y'all. There is no savior, no savior for today or any other day other than our Lord and Savior, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. He is the only savior. He is the only one that can bring us through unscathed. The only one. There is no genius Jesus Jr. There is no Holy Ghost Jr. There is no God Jr. All right. 11. The lofty looks of men shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty and upon every one that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. These are the times when we have to be willing to say, Lord, I don't know. Help me. Help me. If you're looking to the wrong source, then what you are doing inadvertently is superimposing the source you're looking at in place of God. Inadvertently, not willingly, inadvertently. All right, 13. And upon all cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. You hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what that just said? All the folks that everybody exalts, they're all going to be brought down. That's across the board. You hear me? That is across the board. So many of you are looking at everybody but Jesus. 
You're looking at everybody but God. That as human beings, that is our tendency. Some of you women are looking for that man to ride in on that white horse. And they're coming, they're going to come and rescue you. And they're going to take you as their bride. And some of you right now, as, as we talked about earlier, are being beaten, are being maimed, are being crippled, driven crazy by this so-called human being you have bowed to because they have become your idol. How did they become your idol? They beat your behind and you stay. Why do you stay? Some of you stay because that's where the money source is. How else are you going to live? How else are you going to have this finery around you without that man's money? So you sell your soul for the dollar bill, for the materialism, because you, you want to live at a certain level, even if it means getting your behind kicked in order to impress the Joneses, keeping up with the Joneses. You want to dress, you want to waddle, you want to quack like you're all that and a bag of chips. Well, guess what? At what cost, I ask you? At what cost? Some of you men, you have hooked up with a psychopath, but you're so in love with the body parts. You're so in love with that woman's looks. You allow her to abuse your children, your own children, because she's all that and a bag of chips. Really? Really? So you bow to her. You get her what she wants. You do what she wants when she wants. Yes, baby, whatever you want. I live to serve you. I live to please you, baby. While she is stabbing you in your back, while she dismisses you and, and <clears throat> disrespects you and your children in public. But you are so caught up in this woman's appearance and you just love the way she looks. You love the way she does whatever she does that makes you feel good at the expense of your soul, your safety, your life, your health, your children's safety at the expense of all of that and possibly your soul. You're going to hold on to this woman. Why? <laughs> Don't ask me. It doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, moving right along. Uh, 16. And upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. 18. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. So listen, y'all. Whatever you're putting your trust in, you better pray for it while you're putting your trust in it. Because if God says enough, behinds will be revealed to the world. Hidden secrets will be revealed. Tape recordings and videos will start being publicized throughout the whole nation and, and world. All over the internet all over the media because when God has enough and he decides, okay, I'm tired of y'all worshiping this one, that one, or the other one, God knows how to bring everybody down to ground zero, right at the level where everybody is, according to Isaiah. All our righteousness, no matter how much good you think people have done, remember this, all a-L-L, -L, our righteousness, is as filthy rags. Remember that. Don't exalt anybody above measure because you really don't want to see God bring them down to size. That's a very ugly and sad affair. Be careful about that. God is a jealous God. He will have no other gods before him. 19, 
and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. And when he arises to shake terrible the earth. And that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. You don't want things to get so bad that all the good treasures folks have piled up for themselves end up being so meaningless because life is so hard, because God has decided enough is enough. So right in through here, while we're going through these, we're approaching these last times in warp speed, y'all. We better pray hard. We better guard our hearts, guard our minds, keep them polished with the word of God so that we are constantly filled not only with his Holy Spirit, but with the wisdom of God, the mind of Christ, the heart. I ask God for that a lot. Give me the mind of Christ and the heart of God because my heart is tainted and my mind and my understanding is contaminated and totally limited. You need the mind of Christ to rise you above the lies. You need the heart of God to take you beyond your own flesh. You really do. As long as you've got the mind of God and the heart of, or the heart of God and the mind of Christ, you're in pretty good safe. You're in a safe area. You really are. And when you read the word of God, depend on his Holy Spirit to interpret that word to you. Don't always depend on human beings to do it. Depend on the Holy Spirit. When you read God's word, ask God to show you in his word what he wants you to be aware of. Show you whatever the case. I remember years ago, for example, I was attending a church, a local church. And I noticed that a particular uh, self-proclaimed Christian who also preached the word turn me off so so uh, it was such an irritation it was it he was so abrasive to my spirit and i said that man didn't do anything wrong to me why am i so annoyed by him why am i so grieved when i get around his presence and he's sitting around holding court and everybody is, is just feeding off of every word, dripping off of his lips like it's liquid gold. What is that that drives me up the wall? And I asked the Lord, show me, is it jealousy? Is it, is it me being judgmental? Uh, is something wrong with my spirit that, that, that turns me off to this brother in Christ? And I asked the Lord, the Lord, not people around who knew him. I asked the Lord to show me who this man really is so that I could get my spirit right. Let me, let me show this. I want to share this with you because a lot of you don't know God will do this. A lot of us don't ask the right questions so we don't get any answers and we go by whatever. But when you ask the right question, and sometimes you got to ask God to show you what to ask. So you can get the right truth. I had a dream. I'll never forget. It was so real. I literally felt like I had been translated to this man's house. I had a dream about this man. And he was at home with his wife. He was sitting on the couch. Guess where I was? I was invisible sitting on the floor on the other side of the coffee table that was in front of him while he was sitting on the couch watching TV. His wife walks past me because she didn't know I was there. Neither one of them knew I was there. She walks past me and as she walks by him, she gives him a little affectionate uh, dust with her hand. She just does something very sweet and affectionate. What he did blew me away. He takes his hand and he slaps her hand away and whips her away as if to say, shoo, fly, fly, get out of my face. And 
my instant reaction before I even had time to think was, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, I said it out loud. I was so turned off by how, how he dissed his wife after she showed him a warm, affectionate gesture. He looked down at me as if to say, where did you come from? And then I woke up. And I said, thank you, Lord. You have shown me why that person annoys me. Thank you for showing me who they really are. Some of you need to ask God to show you who this one, that one, or the other one really is. And ask him to show you in dreams. But while you're asking, remember to say this. I bind all lies in the name of Jesus. That stops any demon or devil from accusing, falsely accusing the brethren. And that way you know you're hearing from God. Ask God to show you when you have questions about things or you want to believe in this one, that one, or the other one, whatever. Just ask God to show you. You think that you're marrying the man of your dreams. Ask God to show you who, who, who that man is behind every curtain when nobody's looking. You think you found the woman of your dreams. Ask God to show you who they are. You're getting ready to go into a business agreement with someone. And you're going to lock your money up with them because you believe in what they're doing. Before you do that, before you yoke up with anybody for any reason, ask God to reveal to you the hidden secrets, be they good or bad, be they bad or good. That way you know what you're dealing with because you're consulting with God. God rather than leaning to your own understanding. You're consulting with God rather than the great history of that person's accomplishments. Quick story. <clears throat> I've told this before just to share with you how things we don't really always know. But there's always that something something that gives a clue something ain't right in paradise y'all. This man was a deacon in the church. He was a member of the church for years. He had a wife. They had been married for at least seven or eight years. The wife was happy with her husband, but the daughter could not stand him. I take that back. Not seven or eight, maybe two or three years. The daughter was a stepdaughter to the man and the daughter of the wife. She kept Every time the man said anything or did anything, the girl, she did everything she could to treat him with respect, but she did not want to be in the same room with him. Everything about him turned her off. And she didn't know why, but she knew that everything, that there was something wrong with this man. How could mama marry him? It wasn't because he replaced her dad. There was something about that man that rubbed this young lady the wrong way. She was about 16 or 17. And the mother couldn't understand why the daughter would not warm up to her stepdad when he was such a wonderful man, such a great provider, such a faithful steward in the church. Oh my. Well, guess what? Somehow the truth, that detail I don't remember, so forgive me, it's based on a true story. Somehow, the truth came up, and she got in touch with somebody. Somebody got in touch with somebody. I forget that detail. But all of a sudden, the yard is loaded. They got a search warrant, and they searched the whole premises, and they started going around with these, these x-ray things that can look through soil. Do you know that yard was loaded with dead women's corpses? Why? Because the man was a serial killer. But he was a hero in the church. All his dirt was literally uncovered for everyone to see. And the mother finally realized why her daughter couldn't stand him 
couldn't stand to be in the room with him. She had a discernment level the mother did not have because the mother was blinded by the wonderful, grandiose gestures, the, the nice little things he did, the flowers and the this and the that and all the nice things that he did for the church folk. He was such a wonderful church member, but they had no idea this man was a serial killer. No idea right there under their house, right there on their property, right where they lived happily ever after, so to speak. So they thought. But when the truth came undone, how shocked must they have been? This woman thinking she lived and loved and slept with this man, this monster of a man. The daughter was like, yes, I knew something was wrong. I knew it. I knew it. She was not surprised. The wife was, the church was, the man's pastor was, but not that girl. So I say to you, I say to you, there is a scripture, and I'm going to read the very last one right here, 22. This is the crux of the whole message. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Quit tripping off a man. Here's another thing that came to my mind while I was reading this message. Some of you are so caught up in what other people think about you that when you get around certain people, certain subjects don't come up. Certain things don't come up. So possibly, possibly now, they may not know who your real friends are. They may not know what you do with your pastime. Because you put a face on and a front for this group over here. But then when you get with that group over there, you have another face for them. And you get with another group over yonder, you have a whole other costume for them. A whole other dialogue. Why? Because you are trying to fit in. You're trying to fit in with each group. And when you're with one group, the other group is like non-existent in your life. You don't even mention that. Why? Because you're afraid of what they'll think of you. That is another form. That's another thing where God says, cease ye from man. And I'm going to read a quick scripture. And I'm going to make, no, I'm just going to tell it. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2. I think it was Paul. Was getting on Peter's case. Because Peter was hanging out with the Gentiles doing his ministry. But when the people, the Jews came around, the traditional Jews, all of a sudden, Peter backed off and started lining up with what the Jews said. And the people that were with Peter were following suit. Why? Because he wanted to keep up with appearances. Mm -hmm. So, that is, a lot of times we don't realize how hypocritical we are becoming. And it all depends on who we're around. If we're around them, we talk like them. If we're around this one, we talk like this one. If we're around that one, we dress like them. We go to the places and do the things they like because we want them to approve of us. But if we tell that one, if I tell that one that my friend is straight out of Mexico. If I tell the other one that my boss is a black man, if I tell somebody else that my wife is from Asia, Asia Minor, China, Korea, anywhere out there, and we don't really want them to know that when we get around them, we don't bring our wives. When we get around that group, we don't bring our friend. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? We have to be careful. Let me see what it says. <clears throat> he says he got on his case, and I'm closing with this, so it's not going to be much longer. Okay, here we go. Verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I would stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. In other words, he was wrong. For before a certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. 
But when they would come, he withdrew himself, separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also, Barnabas also was carried away with what they call their dissimulation. Be very careful about that. Because what you're becoming is a hypocrite. That is not of God. So whatever you are, whoever you are, be true to you, boo. Be true. Hmm. To thine own self, be true. And if you're true to you, you will be true to God and everyone else. All right. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. But just don't get caught up in what people think of you. Don't worry about if they're looking down on you or if they think you you think you're all that. So you So you shut your personality down so you don't offend. No, they just might not be the people for you to hang with because they don't value who you are. So you walk away until God finds another group of people. But no matter where you go, where there are people, there are fallacies. Where there are people, there are problems. Where there are people, there is friction. And where there are people, there is rejection. So don't get caught up in what people think. Or you be running around dancing to everybody's tune so much, you will totally lose touch with who you really are and who God created you to be. Amen? All right. Be true to you. Be true to God. And you'll be all right.